Welcome back, fellow coders. My name is Fernando here at Codamon, and in this tutorial, I'm going to guide you through how to install PyLogix and how to use it. Uh, uh, PyLogix is a module to read and write data in Allen Bradley PLCs, uh, specifically using the Ether IP protocol. At the moment, it works with Compact Logix and Contra Logix, and also the Micro 800 series. So I'm going to show you how to install the latest version and also the previous version, uh, just in case you don't like the new way of returning data. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna use, uh, do is create a new project. I'm using a uh, virtual environment with Venv, and I already have it activated. So I'll create a new directory here. It's going to call test PyLogix. And then I'm going to install. If you go to the README, uh, you can see how to install it here. This will install the latest branch or the master, whatever is set as the master branch. And then you just hit enter and it will install it. And this is going to install it just for my virtual environment. So if I do pip list, then it's just going to show me the, what I have installed on this environment. Now, if uh, after I show you how to use this, you, you, know, you don't like it, you want to deal with the exceptions yourself, you can install the 0.3.7 um, and what you have to do uh, I'm going to try to put this on the readme so and put it on the link as well for the description but what you do is you go to the commits uh, it does have a tag right now at the moment but you just go to this commit uh, you copy that and then you can do we'll uninstall the current one and then you can do the same command but you do the add sign and add the commit at the end And you see right there, successfully installed PyLogix 0.3.7. I'm going to revert that because I want to show you guys the latest. Okay, so now that we have it installed, uh, we can do a quick test. And we can import PyLogix and we can do dir. And I can show us all the modules that are in this package. Uh, and so we can see EIP, LG, LGX device. Uh, and we have the classes also. So we know we have it installed properly. And by the way, if you haven't ever used Commandeer, uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's uh, pretty good for Windows. So I'm going to cd into the folder that we created for our project. And I'm going to open that in VS Code. And I'm going to just quickly show you the theme that I'm using, just in case that you are wondering what's going on here. Uh, 
Oh, this was strange. Try this again. And I have the, I believe I'm using this one. Yeah, are you Mirage Power Up? Uh, but anyways, so we have inst we have it installed and the first thing that we're going to do is create a new file that we just call it test1 so if we can import same as before import our PLC class we create a new com object and we'll give it a IP in my case mine is 0.26 and it's going to be on slot 1 And um, we're just going to read, uh, let's see, we can read the start, uh, which is a controller tag. Doesn't look like VS Code open my virtual environment, so I'm going to select it here. Now oh, we'll let's see what happens. read and the tag is called start and for now I'm just going to print the result just to see what we get okay and as you see here we get the response object now on the previous version, the 3.7 and below, we we're getting values. Um, and we were, and the, the library was letting the users decide how to handle exceptions in case of an exception. Uh, but other libraries out there are using uh, different approach like returning none objects. Um, and so that's, Kind of the approach that was taken here on the latest update on 4.0 0 0.40 so this object returns three things and we can actually see that if we go to the Go to the definition. And I believe that 
that class was at the bottom. Yes. And so as you can see, we get the tag name and we get the actual value and we get a status. Uh, and this could be an error or a success. So you wanna you wanna get a success. Otherwise, uh, you wanna do something uh, like alert the user that you didn't get a data, you got an error or something like that. Uh, so we're not getting exceptions anymore, but you still need to handle that non-success status. Then we can see and we'll also log the result status. Uh, status and value. We'll run that again. And you see that we got our true status uh, because that's what we have. So if I change that to zero, I'll run that again. We get our false. And for the most part, everything else stay the same. Uh, you can still do reading arrays, reading multi, uh, multiple re reads at the same time. So let's go and, sh and show some of that. So we're gonna do a list. Values and <clears throat> I'm gonna read an array. And it already has 10. And then I'm going to print the values. Save that and run it. And then you see that we get a response. So let's see, I believe we can do So it just returns an array, okay? Uh, and then you can do whatever you want with that whole array. So we've looking, we've lo we've looked at single values, arrays, and then 
lastly we can look at uh, Walter Reed or let's see we actually have a few more things to look at let's do multiple multiple tags So we'll just use three. And we'll print those values. And same as before, we're getting a response. So we're getting a response for three of those tags, right? And so this is actually giving us a list, saying that the list has no, uh, no attribute value. So this is actually returning a list. So I should be able to do land value. So we can see that it's actually three. Okay, so it's a list. So then we should be able to just do a for loop. And the names are kind of strange here, value, value. Probably we'll call it something else, but. And then we get all our three results. Uh, now I have to be honest, I don't use the multi-read that much. Um, but let's quickly see. Let's see if we can see if we can give it the same tax. See what we get. So we also get three response objects just like before. And we should be able to do the same thing. So one of the things uh, that were happening with the previous version is that um, there was a lot of issues or a lot of questions about the usage. Um, so if you <clears throat> were typing the wrong tag um, and you weren't handling that with a try catch, then you would 
essentially get an exception and crash your program. So let me show you what happens. Um, let's get rid of this multi-read. We're doing the same thing up here. And let me do a typo here. And instead of getting the value, I'm gonna get the status. And if I run that, the program's not gonna crash and we're gonna get the status. In this case, the path segment error. So that would indicate a wrong tag or an unexistent tag. Uh, and in this case, you know, we created a typo. So we will get a and we will get a non object because it doesn't exist. So you have to be careful with that. Um, in your program, you have to check whether it's a non object and if it's a non object then you have to do something meaningful like log it to a log tag uh, log file or alert the user that they, this tag is uh, doesn't have any data and you need to do something about it but other than that, there wasn't that many changes to the library, and I think this is a good step um, moving forward. Um, and every, you know, the usage of the library is still pretty simple. Um, and now with this change, I believe it's, it's getting a little easier uh, for the user now that they don't have to handle the exceptions. Uh, but if you have any questions on the usage, something I didn't cover, um, you know, just let me know in the comments uh, and if you have any issues, uh, obviously open up, open a GitHub issue for it as well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.